Oh, this is a tutorial on how you can get an accurate CRT screen in Blender 4.0. So first, you need to select the material for your CRT. Okay, so for this, I'm just going to do basic noise texture. Because noise texture it provides a lot of noise and stuff. I'm going to scale it up, and I'm going to crank the detail a bit much. And the distortion up a little bit so you can see. Uh, if you had a gamma... I turn down the gamma and I'll turn it up so it so it's more saturated. It also kind of looks like an old screensaver. Anyways, you can push this back and you want to bring in a picture of an RGB like pixel basically. So what this looks like is well I can't show it to you, but I need a mapping node first. Okay, hopefully it'll scale properly with this one. Okay, you can rotate it 90 degrees. Uh... So what you can do is you can set it to the resolution of an actual CRT monitor, or basically whatever resolution you'd like. Let's set the scaling to zero right here, so. Alright, so now that you have your two shaders, or your two pictures, so this is your RGB image that you've scaled, and then this is the actual picture you want. Once again, I'm just using a noise texture. Alright, so now you add a sep separate color, and you plug this one into here, and you can duplicate it and plug this one into here. And then you get a math node that yeah, everyone knows. You know it's in the material or shader if you don't have a math node. Alright, and then set to multiply. And so these are our three color values, red, green, and blue. So you can represent this one as red. And so you'll plug these two reds in here. And then you gotta represent the green for green and the blue for blue. And then, you get a combined color, and then you plug it in. Alright, so now what this looks like is, uh, it's basically the picture, but it has been added into, uh, so it was used the aforementioned red, green, and blue varying brightness with the pixel. So, if I turn up the emission, you can tell, but I gotta plug the color into the emission. Give it a sec. Okay, you know what? Just add an emission shader. It'll be better that way. And so you can see in a green spot, mostly only the green ones are illuminated. And that's how it works with an actual monitor. If you if you look close enough at your monitor that you're watching this on or even your phone, uh, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is where we are. We've currently gotten the realistic shader working, but that is only halfway through. What else you have to do is you have to get the realistic flicker. This happens because uh, the monitor turns on and off really fast. Well, it doesn't turn on and off. So what happens is an electric gun scans beams, but it doesn't stay on all the way until it gets there. It's like by the time the beam is here, all the all the uh, phosphors that have been illuminated are already dead. So it's just like a really quick line going, but it's going so fast our eyes can't can't see in between it. It can only see it all illuminated at once because of uh, can't perceive stuff moving that fast but uh, a camera kind of can uh so when the refresh rate does not match the hertz rate of a monitor which is very frequent honestly uh it, you get that's where you get the weird flickering effect you get like the rolling bars going across the screen and um 
Sometimes people can see it, but uh, I think it's solved by just turning the hertz higher than 60. But I'm going to tell you how to emulate this because it would be very inefficient and it would be very hard to make it turn on and off very fast. Like switch it to black 60 times uh, every 24 frames, which you would have to multiply 60 by 24, and then that's what frame rate you'd have to render it in. Then you'd have to play it at a slow speed in your editing program. And and that's very cumbersome and it is not worth it. So here's a quick quick shortcut. So you add a wave texture, then you add a color ramp. Right here. And you move it back. Then you add a math node. Then you set it to multiply. And then plug this into the value. And you also add an add shader right here. And then what you have to do is you have to turn it down uh, just enough so it's not pure black, but it's like dark black, dark, dark. Like, like that, that's good enough. And then you can mess around with this and bring them like really, really, really close together. So look, here's what you have by now. You should have these bars going across your screen, but the blue is actually the... I mean, the black is the part that's actually not being blended in. Uh, this would probably be nicer to look at if it was in a material property view. So you can see, it's, it's just the red being illuminated right now. Okay, so now, now the mapping node, and the coordinate node, extra coordinate node. Plug this into here, plug this into here. Now this gives you the ability to, so it should, it already put a horizontally for me, so that's nice. Don't you know it always goes horizontally, never goes vertically. Um, also, if you notice, there's actually a little bit of definition. So you can maybe do that a little bit. This. That looks pretty good. Alright. So now that you have this, you actually want to plug the camera into it, not the object. Because it's always in relation to where the camera is. So if you scale it up again. Set the rotation to 90, then you set the scale correctly. That looks about right. And then uh, you can also, I would probably set this to rings as well. So it gives you this effect. I would also change the location. And so then you get this effect. You get the dark bands going through. So now you should have this. Oh, you can also change the values in relation to what else. So you have this look right here. Uh, it should be like darkening the image. I don't know why it's as far as because. So add. So add this. Okay, there you go. You can actually get a lot more precise stuff with a uh, with a uh, divide. Like this collective exponent, possibly. No, definitely not exponent. All 
All right, so I would use divide personally. Also, um, if you want to actually like animate it, so you can change the location value and you can just animate it by pressing I and skipping forward your thing and changing it and pressing I again. So then if you press play, oh, you also press V instead of vector. So it goes at a constant rate and then you get this effect. You can obviously make it longer and stuff. Uh, or you can't even animate it at all, or you can make it really fast. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video on how to make a realistic CRT screen in Blender. Uh, anyways, make sure to like and subscribe if you don't like tutorials and like backrooms videos, because that's what our channel is about. I'm just doing this because there's not another tutorial online that I could find, and I think people need to know. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed, and see you in about four months when I upload again. Goodbye.